Hey everyone, Cody here, and as you can see, I kind of have like a constellation going on on my forehead. I'm not sure. It's a triangle. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> Anyway, today we're going to be doing a, well, a painting that was kind of suggested to me that I'm putting my own twist on. So, uh, someone in the comments had uh, suggested that I do an Andy Warhol type painting. Now, if you don't know, Andy Warhol did these, uh, these really iconic pop art uh, paintings uh, and pictures. Uh, one of them being the Campbell soup can, and another one being that picture of Marilyn Monroe where it's uh, her head and then it's different color versions of that and it's in a square. I'll put a, an image of it here. In fact, I want you to reference that because this is the image I'm going to kind of use as a template. But I'm not going to be making a Warhol type painting alone. You see, my style is a little too abstract to kind of go and create uh, her face. I'm just, I'm not that talented, and it's not really the style I go for. I go for more of uh, shapes and colors. Um, so what, why, but one artist that I am fascinated with that I wanna do a couple more of that types of paintings is Rothko. So Rothko, if again, you don't know who he is, he has art where it's these giant squares and I'll put another set of images here. So Rothko did these, you know, these large paintings and they were usually just rectangles or squares within a large rectangular square. And Rothko is known for this. So I thought it would be an interesting experiment to make a Rothko Warhol type painting. So it's got the pop colors and it's the same thing in each one, but they're squares. So it's like a squares within squares within squares. Squareception. I don't know if you would call this a, a Rothel painting or a Warco painting. I don't know. Anyway, a Rothko Warhol painting. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to kind of take that Warhol idea of the pop colors and, you know, the repeating pattern. But with a Rothko painting, which is squares within squares. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So we're gonna head over to the table and I'm gonna show you the colors I've got and kind of how we're gonna approach this. And uh, yeah, we'll see you at the table. All right, so as you can kind of see everything that I've got laid out, uh, what we're gonna do is we'll talk about the colors and what I've got here and how we're gonna approach this and then we'll kind of get into it. So uh, I'm gonna do four squares. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this, well, we're not going to cut it, but we're going to separate this uh, square canvas into uh, four small squares within that that we're going to we're going to paint and then we're going to paint these squares within that. Um, so that is kind of how we're going to approach that today. OK, and so what we're going to do is we'll talk about the colors. So these are the sets of colors. Um, the colors on the right side are the ones that I'll be doing as like the background and the colors on the inside are the ones that I'll be doing as kind of the inset color. Okay. Uh, so we've got turquoise and this, uh, magenta, we've got red and turquoise. Oh, this is more of a teal, like an aqua green, sorry. Uh, red and turquoise and we've got blue and yellow. And then we have a uh, light brown with a, a light green. Uh, so. That's the colors we're gonna be working with. And now we'll go ahead and I, I'm just gonna be using a single print paintbrush. So I'm gonna use the same paintbrush uh, over and over again. And I'll just kind of put a towel up here for me to uh, wipe that off on. All right, so now what we're gonna do before we start painting is we're gonna separate this bad boy into, um, we're gonna separate it into the sections. So this is a 20 by 20 canvas. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up with 20 and 20, and we'll put our mark here. It's right about there. All right, and then we'll do the same here. So we'll put it 10 and 10, and we will go ahead and mark it there. All right, so we'll do the same here. Move those, move those paints aside, and Put it on 10 and put it on 10, move it down just a, just slightly. 
and I think we're pretty good. Doesn't need to be exact, it'll be okay. All right, so we've got our mark there. And finally, 10 and 10, move it down just a little bit. And that's pretty good. Now I'm not gonna make this mark super dark or anything because uh, I'm not really trying to get it to come through the paint. I just want it as a reference. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and make a light mark across the canvas so we have an idea of where that's gonna go or it could just not write at all. Uh, it's almost out of lead, that's why. It keeps going back in. You know when you're like out of lead in the pencil and it just keeps disappearing? Yeah, that's what it's doing. Don't even know if I have any more lead in there. I do, yay! Awesome. Okay, let's try this again. Put it back. Put it back. Slide that bad boy down. And line it up. There. And there. And run that bad boy across. Perfect. Cool, cool. So now we've got that set. So we can put our, our handyman tools aside. Now, the one thing I wasn't sure on when I was thinking about doing this painting was do I do the outsides first and then the insides, or do, the, do I do the insides first and then the outside? Okay, so I think we're going to go ahead and approach it from the outside in. I don't know for sure if Rothko did that. I, I've seen a couple of videos, but it's been a while. So uh, we'll just kind of, that's how we're gonna do it. All right, so we're gonna start with our turquoise. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of make, you know, like a like an outside border. They probably uh, won't be the same size squares. In fact, I don't, maybe I should have uh, found some kind of square object to, to use as a template, but you know what, his squares weren't perfect. So we're just gonna do it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a, just a little bit of paint on there, not too much. And the reason is, is because, uh, you know, Roscoe used these really, really thin down paints, almost more like chemical than paint. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna get a little bit of water here and we're really going to stretch this paint out, okay? So we're gonna bring this over and we're gonna bring this down. And you know what, maybe we'll just use the width of the paintbrush as kind of a marker on how wide we're gonna make it. So we're gonna bring this paint over and then we're going to pull this over. All right, and so since he did these really thin um, paint paintings, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So we're just gonna keep pulling the paint out over and over until it's a really thin layer. So now we'll bring it up and I'm just gonna do this for the edges. Now, another thing that I noticed about, uh, you know, Roscoe's work is his squares weren't perfect. They were, uh, they were kind of rounded. So we're just going to kind of follow that vein. And we'll, we'll kind of round our squares too. And we'll get a little bit of water just to kind of thin this out. Okay, so then we'll kind of leave that for the square that we do within that. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and clean out the brush and we'll move on to our next little area. And this time I'm actually gonna use a little bit less paint. So not even as much as we did here. And that's that's a little of a little bit of an issue because it's gonna push into it, but it's all right. I think we'll be okay. 
we'll just we'll kind of go with it and just accept it for what it is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of work that in and start pulling these colors out. And pull that to the edge there. Pull that out. All right, so let's see if we can uh, kind of send this out a little more and get some more use out of it. Pull that along. All right, so it's not going to be quite enough. Just need a little bit more. Let's put a little dot. And that's going to bleed into uh, that other one. But you know what? It looks kind of imperfect, which these paintings aren't supposed to be perfect. So, you know, it's, uh, I think that's going to be okay. We'll just pull that. And we'll see if we can kind of use this to our advantage here. And it's okay if we have these little uh, kind of markings over here. Okay, cool. So we've got our second square done. Let's move into our third one. Clean the brush off a little bit. Just wipe it off, but it's okay if it's a little damp. We're gonna move right into our uh, next color. I don't know how I always get stuff all over my canvas. I don't, just don't understand. All right, so a little there and there. These are some big drops, so I think uh, I think that's probably enough paint. So we'll go ahead and go to the edge here, start pulling that down, pull that over. this out. Yeah, I think we got plenty of paint here. We can kind of thin it as we go too. Let's see if we can gather a little bit more of that. Okay, so now this one's a little bit thicker, so we're gonna kind of use this water to kind of go over it. Okay, cool, cool. So we've got uh, we've got three out of four doing good. So now we can kind of move on to our last one and then we can start doing the insides. All right, so we'll wipe that off. Now I realize that if you're a fan of Rothko, I'm probably using actually way too much paint, believe it or not. But um, I think for the aesthetic, with, you know, it's fine. We're just here to kind of make something fun, you know what I mean? So I think we'll I think we'll be okay. You know, it may not be true Rothko, but uh, you know, I think we'll live. All right, so we've got that. Let's pull this down, kind of pull this out. And it picked up a little bit of blue, which I think it's gonna do right there too. So I don't know if I can kind of pull this along. I'm actually gonna try to cover up this raw canvas here. 
All right. So this paint is a little bit thinner, this brown. So yeah, it's picking up the picking up the blue. That's okay. I think we're I think we're okay. All right. So let's see. Oh, there it is. Let's see if we can kind of pull a little bit of that out, and then kind of meet the uh, the width on these other ones. Go a little bit down on this one. And I think we're good. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got our four squares going. Now we can kind of do our inside squares and, you know, uh, get this, this painting done over here. All right, so now that we've got our brush fairly clean, now we can, I think, be a little bit more liberal on the water. I think we could, you know, if, we, if it's not enough, we can actually add the water and kind of really cover it. So we're gonna use a lot of the paint in the center because we kind of want it to thin out as we go. So we're gonna pull the paint out as far as it'll go and then we're gonna start thinning it out. Pull it out to the edges. And actually it, it feels kind of like a, a Rothko now. So almost like a, like we're actually kind of thinning it out so you can kind of see the transparency in the layers. So we're going to cover the layers. It's okay if there's actually a little bit of overlap that kind of gives you that feel that it's, it's uh, you know, that they are two separate ones. And we'll use a little bit more water. Pull this out some more. I might actually have to get a little bit more paint. I didn't really want to. I was trying to keep it as thin as possible, but. And here, I'm gonna try to clean up the, the brush strokes so it looks like, you know, it's just one continuous line or brush stroke. So I'm gonna. Pull that out and then kind of just get a little tiny bit more water. You can pull out a, just a little bit more of the color. Actually, that looks pretty cool. It's uh, It looks cooler than I expected. And we'll just clean up any little gaps here in the paint. Make sure that we got uh, all of it covered here. Okay, so now we'll clean up that brush stroke. Just kind of. And I think it's uh, it looks pretty cool. This is a little bit of overlap over there, but I think that's uh, I think that's going to be okay. All right, so let's move on to our next next color. We get a little bit of water in there, just a little bit of water. It's, uh, yeah, it's a little muddy. I know. <clears throat> All right, throw our turquoise on there, and again, we don't want to use too much. Looks like it might be a a little dried out in the cap, so let's see if we can. All right, so let's uh, let's see if that's enough. So let's kind of pull it out, pull the water from the uh, the water since it's a little muddy, kind of mix with the color. So I'm gonna mix with that in real quick before we actually start moving it around, and I'll try to do a better job of cleaning the brush out next time. All right, so again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull this, uh, we're gonna kind of take the paint that's here and try to thin it out as we go. Actually might have used too much paint, but that's okay. So let's, uh, let's see if we can kind of fill that out here. Okay. 
Yeah, there's actually a lot of paint here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to scoop some of that paint off. And we're gonna try to, we're gonna try to thin this out. So I'm gonna see if I can pick up some more of the paint so that it thins it out. So I'll just kind of go through here and pick it up with a brush. I did get some on there. I'm gonna scrape that off. All right, so basically I just kind of wiped the brush on some, some used paper. Um, and now we're gonna just, if it ever wants to spray. Well, that's not what I meant to do, but okay. It was not set to spray, it set to stream, which is not what I wanted, but all right, we're okay. We can use that water. And now we can kind of fill in the gaps and kind of go over the edges a little bit so that you can kind of see the layer under it. And so we'll kind of bring this out. There's a little, uh, little stick or something on there. Why does this happen to me? And now it's in the paint. I just can't win, can I? Get out of there, little stick. All right, cool. So. All right, two down, two to go. And I didn't realize I had this big old blob still here. Let's see if we can kind of even that out. There we go. Didn't realize uh, there was so much excess paint right there. All right, so now we'll clean our brush out. It is getting pretty muddy in there. I wonder if I can just get the paint off of it. And then kind of wipe the brush off here. Just to kind of get the excess paint off. And then maybe I'll just spray the paint when I put it on. All right, so now we're going to move on to this one. This was yellow. But just a little bit. And then I'm going to spray it down. Fill in the major parts. Uh, that's actually pretty vibrant. Uh, I think that was a good choice of contrasting colors there. And the yellow, since it's so, it pops so much, we didn't even need a lot of it. And because it's such a dark color underneath, you can kind of see the edge. Cool. All right, so done with that one. Now we can kind of move on to our last one. This uh, this lime green, which 
I'm not super excited about, but you know what? We've already, uh, the die has been cast, if you will. I've already picked it out. We're not going back now. So we'll put on our last little layer of paint here. And then a little bit of water. And here we go. We'll make sure that we got any other loose colors off. And see what we can do here. I really don't like this color. Again, I'm, I'm not a fan of green, especially lime green. I suppose it has its uses, but I don't know what those uses are. I guess if I was painting trees, maybe it would you know, come in handy, but usually red, black, and white are kind of my go-to colors. And then sometimes blue, dark blue, I like dark blue. But as a color scheme, uh, red, black, and white is probably my favorite, followed by uh, red, white, black, and blue. And then white, black, silver, and gold. All right, so now we're just gonna kinda take any excess paint that we have here, and kinda fill in these gaps with the white. smooth it out so it looks like it was kind of all done at once right and that's it we are done all right so let me go ahead and show you guys the final piece and there it is i will go ahead and put kind of a picture of the other one next to it so you can kind of get a reference i'll move that over so you guys can you know get an idea of it but ultimately um it's it's kind of a fun painting i you know I, i'll be honest i probably wouldn't hang this in my house um but just doing something different just kind of having fun with it it's a fun painting it was fun to make i, I suppose if your colors or your strokes turned out pretty good this might actually be a decent painting to hang up or you know just a fun one to do with kids or something you know that's a little bit more challenging than just a single rothko type painting um you know just again just a fun activity maybe to do with kids or you know if you're just looking for something to do uh that isn't super challenging um but you know you could get a little bit of color out of i think that this is probably it so ultimately that is the uh well that's my warco painting or roth wall roth hall yeah anyway you know what i'm trying to say but anyways that's it for the for the video guys just kind of a fun uh different thing today and yeah that's it i will uh see you guys on the next one take care god bless and see you then bye guys